welcome everybody back to the channel. My name is Andrew Hahn. This is my channel. We mostly talk about running and this is the weekly recap of marathon training for the fall. Week three is in the books as of this morning and we're getting ready to start week four. Let's talk real quick about week four. So the week that was included 55.2 miles running, 10.94 miles on the bike, and 6.71 miles walking. I do have my phone with me in my hand. Sorry if this is a little distracting, but I have like the individual paces for the runs on the phone. We're going to talk about each of those individual runs because this is, like I said, the weekly recap where we just lay all the cards on the table and talk about what each of the runs look like. Now I know this type of video isn't for everybody. I'm hoping to do some more like entertaining videos throughout the week. And if you want like my day to day, like what I'm doing, I have really leaned into the Instagram reels. I'll put my handle down below, but like little short produced reels every day that get the daily runs in real time. Anyway, back to the week that was. My weekly cycle is normally set up to start on Monday, end with the long run on Sunday. And typically it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday are easy runs with Saturday being longer in distance. Tuesday and Thursday are some sort of structured workout. Sunday is a long run. This week, we didn't do a workout on Tuesday because we raced a 5K on Thursday. We'll talk about the 5K in just a second. So Monday, two miles with the wife and then five miles solo at nine minutes per mile. So just a really nice recovery day, seven total miles. None of them at like high heart rate, all low heart rate, just really good work to just kind of refresh into the week. Tuesday was two miles with the wife and it's seven miles solo. The miles solo were at eight minutes per mile. So again, just a pretty nice, like a little bit faster than obviously a little bit faster than nine minutes, but nothing too terribly taxing. The average beats per minute was 143 on uh, the Tuesday. Wednesday was eight total miles at 754 per mile. So again, just tightening the screws a little bit. Nothing too crazy, too terribly fast. 147 was the average beats per minute on Wednesday. And then Thursday got up in the morning to two miles just to kind of loosen up the legs. Wanted a little bit of, you know, activation in the morning before the evening race that started at 6. 30. So Race Judicata is a uh, charity race for the Chicago Volunteer Legal Services. It's where kind of the legal community in Chicago comes together to raise money so that way people who uh, you know, can't afford legal services can get access to them. Several thousand runners come out every year. It's a well-attended event. It's a great time to hang out if you're in the profession um, and meet other people, meet other lawyers, meet other companies that utilize law firms, all that sort of great stuff. The entire field was about probably you know, 30 seconds to a minute slower than normal this year. I had gone into the race really kind of wanting to take a crack at the PR. So my PR is 1903. I wanted to go underneath of that. I was quickly disabused of that notion at about mile two. So I think there's a few reasons for it and, and not really excuses because I there are certainly a lot of errors that I made. But one, it was 90 degrees at the start of the race. That is, I mean, it's just pretty hot to be racing, period. But it's like especially pretty hot to be racing in Chicago because we're not used to those type of temperatures. Um, two, there was like a 13 to 15 mile per hour wind that we only ever got as a headwind. We never got the benefit of it as a tailwind because of the course setup. So the course was basically like a one mile loop around a park under heavy tree cover. So you didn't really get much wind action because of the tree cover of this park, but then you go around the loop, you go underneath an overpass and you get out on the lakefront trail and you basically go an out and back. The out is heading north, the back is coming back south and we had a westerly wind, so coming from the city towards the lake. But between the out and the back, there's a really pretty heavy row of trees and there's, an, there's a slight elevation difference, I don't know, probably like 10 feet or so. 
So between the 10 feet and the heavy trees, we didn't really get a tailwind on the out. But when we turned the corner, we went up in elevation, we got on the other side of the tree row, coming back south, the wind was in our face for like the entire last mile. And so really hot, pretty strong winds, right? Like 15, 13 to 15 mile per hour constant with higher gusts in the last mile of the 5K. Um, those two things put together made for really challenging race day. The, the water, I don't normally take water uh, either to cool myself down like splashing in the body or to drink on the course, but it was so hot. And coming back down the course uh, in that last mile, I took two water cups. One I splashed right in my face, like kind of aiming for my mouth to get as much as I could in, but the other over the top of the head. But it was tough, right? And like kind of everyone petered out. I finished 24th out of, uh, I think, 2,160 runners. So my relative position to the field was about the same as last year when I ran 1907. Just the whole field was slower because it was a tough day. I also don't think I quite nailed race day nutrition. Um, I think I did well with breakfast. I think I did well. I would It would have been good like the last two hours before the race. Lunch is what really tripped me up. I had intended to only eat like a like a, a little kind of handful of easy digestible pasta. I ended up eating like an entire plate full. Just kind of really wasn't uh, you know conscious of what I was doing, and it definitely came back to bite me because I I the stomach felt really heavy in the middle of the race. Um, this is TMI, but like I like kind of halfway heaved while I was running, and I could you know you could taste it in your mouth and. Honestly, I, I kind of have like a famously weak constitution for that sort of stuff. So I'm, I'm very surprised that I didn't like bail out then and just pull over to the side, but was able to keep it down. But nonetheless, like upset stomach, again, my fault. That's not an excuse. Uh, you know, my fault. Things that I didn't control well include the race day nutrition. But anyways, um, because of the temperature, because of the wind, that 1947, like, it was kind of draining. Like, I had a hard time sleeping that night because, like, I was, I mean, one, I was frustrated with the effort, but two, just, like, some aches and, and wiggles and all that sort of stuff. Friday, got up four miles at 9.35, so again, really kind of feeling it. And it was interesting because I really felt it kind of, kind of up in the upper body more than the lower body whatever so friday was four miles at 9 35 saturday was five miles at 8 42 so like slowly bringing the pace down starting to feel a little better and then this morning it's another hot day here in chicago so i wanted to wake up and get basically the entire run done prior to the sun really coming up and it warming up really quickly so so i set my alarm for four it's pretty early got out the door just after 4 30 got back before seven and got in 17 miles at 754 per mile and and really the laps were pretty consistent except for the last two so i've, I've decided kind of in each of my long runs if i don't have like a built-in workout segment in the long run and my plan does call for like some of those like you know five mile progressions in the middle of the long run but today's run didn't call for that so on the runs that don't call for that, I'm going to do the second to last mile at marathon effort. And then I'll do the last mile to recover the heart rate. So today, you know, got down to 650 and then went back up to 820 in the last mile, plus two miles. So the average pace ended up being 754. And the encouraging thing about this was the average heart rate was 148 beats per minute. So nice recovery from the 5K really good heart rate for the distance and for the pace these are encouraging signs you know last week my long run the heart rate was a little higher than i wanted it to be we talked about that today you know evidence that we're still on track for the goals because the heart rate felt much better um so that's the week that was the week that is coming is just a standard workout week tomorrow is the fourth of july independence day here in the united states I will get up and run. I don't really have anything too crazily planned. I'm still kind of like running solo this week because my wife, this weekend, because my wife is hanging out with some friends in Texas. So I'm sure she's having a blast. But anyway, getting up, get a run in, normal training week. I did retire uh, the current pair of the Endorphin Speeds 2. 
replacing them like for like. So just pulling out a new pair of Endorphin Speed 2. I really would have liked for the 3s to have already come out, but they haven't. So you just kind of got to roll with what you got, and that's what we got. The uh, Vaporfly Next Percent, you probably saw it in the video footage. Um, those, that 5K was the send-off race for them, so it would have been nice to have you know, sent them off on a high note. But those now move over into the training rotation, and I will selectively use those for about another 100 to 150 miles in the training rotation. Um, you can already kind of feel they're not quite as poppy as they used to be, so we're not racing them anymore, but they move over into the training rotation. So between the Endorphin Speed 2s, and the uh, Vaporfly Next Percents that have bumped over, those are going to be the Speed and Long Run shoes, the ASIC Nova Blast 2 from, uh, you know, the shoe rotation video midweek. Those become the easy day in just racking up mileage shoes, and I feel pretty good, feel still pretty on track. The next big thing, and I'm really looking forward to this, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do about it, so if you have any suggestions, leave it in the comment section below. But anyways, I signed up for the Tracksmith 5000 in Chicago. It's July 15th, I believe. It's whatever that Friday is. So those of you who don't know what this series is, Tracksmith, an apparel company, is putting on a bunch of Twilight 5Ks in various cities across the country. And they're coming to each city twice, giving yourself the opportunity to improve from the first one to the second one. They're all in the evening, and they're actual 5Ks on a track. So 400 meter track, and we're running a 5K. I've never done this before. The longest I've ever run on a track, I mean, I guess I've done a mile, like for middle school, the presidential fitness, but when I was running track, I was a sprinter. So, you know, like we did 600s and we did 800s in training, but that was the longest I'd ever did on a track. Um, and as far as racing on a track, the longest I've ever raced on a track is 400 meters. And so I'm kind of excited about this, but what I, what I don't know how I'm gonna approach it is there are different heats. and. I don't know if I got these numbers exactly correct, so bear with me, but the general idea of it is, is like there's, there's a number, I think it's 16 minutes, everyone whose target is under 16 minutes goes in like one heat, and then the target goes up by a minute, I think, so like 16 to 17, 17 to 18, 18 to 19, 19 to 20 maybe, and then at some point in time, they start becoming two minute increments. Basically, I have like a choice of do I line up in the 18 to 19 minute and really just try to let the pack like carry me around the track for a sub 19 PR or do you sign up in the 19 to 20 or whichever it might be the two so 19 to 21 or 19 to 20 heat and try to like front run the pack and close it hard at the end to get under 19. I have no idea. No idea. So if you have any suggestions on how to line up and try to pace relative to the pack for a new 5K PR being run on an actual track, hit me up in the comments below. That's all I've got. Uh, I will for sure, for sure see you at the end of next week because these weekly recaps are going to keep rolling forward. Let me know if there's a uh, topic that you would like to hear about in the midweek or you'd like to talk about in the midweek because I'd like to do more midweek videos, but that's all I got. Again, my name's Andy. Thanks a lot. If you like the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave a comment down below. Ring that notification bell. And I will talk to you next time. Peace.